so guys welcome to the channel and today we are going to study about garbage how to discharge what to discharge and all the rules and regulations of marpur the ocean is vast it's deeper in places than mount everest and it covers over two thirds of the earth's surface it is home to 90% of life on this planet and is a critical resource for human life Tragically, the ocean is now polluted by over 100 million tons of plastic debris. MARPOL, or the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, contains two annexes targeted at eliminating waste pollution from ships. These two regulations are an important step towards protecting our oceans. In this program, We'll learn how Annex 4 governs the collection and disposal of sewage at sea. We'll also look at the requirements for sorting, storing, and disposal of garbage. We'll learn about the MARPOL requirements for a garbage management plan. And we'll show you how to correctly fill out a garbage record book. MARPOL Annex 5 took effect in 2013 and controls the collection and discharge of garbage from ships. It also directs that any garbage discharge should occur as far from land as possible. Items you're allowed to discharge include food waste, bulk cargo residue, wash water, and animal carcasses. The annex bans dumping of plastic waste in any form, including ashes from incinerated plastic. No other refuse may be discharged to the sea. Food waste may be discharged beyond the 12 mile limit. And if ground finer than a 25 millimeter mesh, may be discharged at three miles. Cargo residues, along with wash water containing cargo residue or from the deck, may be discharged outside of 12 nautical miles, providing they do not contain any substances harmful to the environment. Animal carcasses must be discharged as far from land as possible. If food waste cannot be separated from other garbage, the most stringent discharge requirements apply. As with Annex 4, Annex 5 outlines special areas in which additional regulations apply. These special areas include the North Sea, Baltic Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Black Sea, Red Sea, Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman, the Antarctic below 60 degrees south, and the wider Caribbean region, which includes the Gulf of Mexico. Within these areas, food waste may only be discharged when 12 nautical miles or farther from land. Food wastes must be ground to 25 millimeters or smaller. In Australia, the nearest land designation begins at the eastern edge of the Great Barrier Reef, and no discharge may occur there. Cargo residue may only be discharged in special areas if the cargo residue and cleaning agents do not contain any substance harmful to the environment. Both the port of departure and the port of destination are within the special area, and the ship will not leave the special area between calls. If there are no adequate reception facilities for residue at those ports. In all circumstances, the 12 mile limit must be observed. The Antarctic region has additional requirements which includes sterilizing any garbage that contains avian products, including poultry. Passenger vessels and vessels of 100 tons and above are required to carry a garbage management plan. The garbage management plan outlines procedures for minimizing, collecting, storing, processing, and disposing of garbage. The plan also designates a person or persons in charge of carrying out the plan. Additionally, the plan must list the ship's particulars and the garbage storage arrangements. A good garbage management plan begins dockside by reducing excess packaging that may come aboard with the ship's stores. On board, Annex 5 requires placards to be posted informing the crew of garbage discharge regulations. To best manage garbage, it should be separated by type. The garbage management plan should also include instructions for incineration and compacting procedures if the ship is equipped.
NX5 also requires passenger ships and ships of 400 tons or greater be supplied a garbage record book. Every discharge to the sea or reception facility or completed incineration must be recorded promptly in the garbage record book. Additionally, a waste delivery receipt must be obtained from the port facility. If the port reception facility is inadequate to receive waste or refuses reception, this inadequacy must be reported in the garbage record book alongside the proper IMO forms. For the purposes of the garbage record book, garbage is to be grouped into categories as follows. Plastics, food wastes, domestic wastes, cooking oil, incinerator ashes, operational ashes, cargo residues, animal carcasses, and fishing gear. Each entry must be signed by the officer in charge, and each completed page of the book will be signed by the master of the ship. Entries in the garbage record book must be in either English, French, or Spanish. Each entry should include the date, time, position, category of garbage, and the estimated amount discharged or incinerated. In the event of an accidental loss or discharge of garbage, an entry should be made in the garbage record book detailing the location, circumstances, reason for discharge, details of items lost, and the precautions taken to prevent loss. In this program, we learned the rules regarding sewage collection and treatment aboard ships, and when you're allowed to discharge, what types need to be stored, and when and where you can safely discharge. We so this is your latest uh, Marburg 2019 edition, and this is your NX5 discharge of garbage and uh, most of the things we have seen. Then form for the cargo record book. So as we were saying, it's revised. And as per garbage record book, uh, the vessel should comply with NX5. We should have a garbage management plan. And you have the different categories of what, what we saw. The latest category is e-waste which you can see and then e-waste means electrical and electronic waste so you will see about that then part two of the garbage record book is cargo residues two types one is non-hazardous material and one is hazardous material, hazardous to marine environment and non-hazardous to marine environment. So entries, you know what you have to do, date and time of discharge, port facility or name of ship, categories of garbage, amount of each category and signed by the officer in charge. Amount we have to write in cubic meters as per how much cubic capacity and drums. We have each drum of 200 liters. So you, your book garbage record will contain your ship's name, letters and IMO numbers. And these are the categories which we have to fill. We have already seen. Then accidental or exceptional discharge is a separate column. And this is part two, where you have this cargo residues category J and K. So if it is hazardous or non-hazardous, if we will enter here, and then we will see how, what to, how to decide that if it is hazardous or non-hazardous. So then we see the application unless expressly provided. Otherwise, the provisions of this annex shall apply to all the ships. So annex five applies to all ships. If it is small, big pilot vessel or VLCC. Yes, there is a limitation of garbage management plan and garbage record book that we will see. Then there is also a special requirement for discharging of garbage from fixed or floating platforms, which uh, within alongside or 500 nautical miles of such platforms. So we have a table, let's see about the table. 
So in this table, you can see we have also last column for offshore platforms, which are located 12 nautical miles from nearest land. And uh, when the ship is alongside them or 500 my meters uh, of such platforms within that range. So you can see most of the discharge categories are prohibited except uh, some cases that we will see now. So all ports are required to have reception facilities and only exception to the reception facility is either if it is an accidental discharge of garbage or reception facility is not available on these ports. Like you see, or some people, sometimes ports are refusing. Like nowadays you saw in this COVID time that uh, many places ports are refusing or after that uh, the new rule came that we need to uh, have sanitized and give a certificate of sanitization of all the garbage. And then accidental loss of fishing gear or fishing gear for saving the life of the fishing boat or ship crew. Then uh, incineration entry is very important and we have to note down both the start and stop time of incineration and generally get it signed by duty engineer or second engineer who is the in charge and she also is also signing with the, the amount of ash generated or quantity which was put oily rags or whatever uh, category was uh, incinerated then uh, there, as we discussed there is a separate requirement for garbage record book so any ship uh, which is certified to carry 15 percent or more it should have a garbage record book and fixed or floating platforms will have a garbage record book so no ship is allowed to put garbage into the water but garbage record book is only required for ships uh, uh, who are having more than 15 persons of uh, crew or people persons and their voyage is more than one hour if it is less then they can be waived as per, that also as per administration and or fixed or floating platforms they might be exempted from garbage record book so every ship of 100 gta and above and 15 persons or more shall carry a garbage record book and also a garbage management plan and it should be approved and all the procedures what we discussed for minimizing collecting storing and processing and disposing of garbage should be included with all the equipments commuter or incinerator compactor whatever is there it should be included in this plan and every ship of 400 tonnage and more and certified to carry 15 persons or more engaged in uh, voyages to different ports or offshore terminals should carry a garbage record book which we saw now two parts the next thing we know that uh, on all the annexes of marpole and even in solas the new thing has come to Make sure that garbage and all solas chapters and marpole annexes are followed uh, strictly. That all the chapters are included with this new amendments of verification of compliance. That the PSCs and other inspectors, flag states, and wetting inspectors, everyone has to thoroughly check. As uh, it is mentioned as per marpole, that they have to check uh, special checks of each annex of marpole. So this is verification for annex five that it uh, has to be complied and it has to be checked with periodical audits by IMO or class or other flag states. And it should be based on overall schedule developed by the IMO. So there is a special schedule developed by IMO for all the annexes and that has to be followed. And as per that checklist, all checks and verification have to be done. Now there is a special requirement for ships operating in polar waters with polar code or Arctic waters because uh, there is a lot of uh, marine growth in these environments and uh, with the garbage already because of the very negative temperatures the necessary bacteria in these waters are already not present 
so the biological oxygen demand is quite high so discharge into the sea of garbage is to be treated sanitized uh, sterilized and uh, the process of this annex have to be followed so this is the criteria for checking that if your uh, bulk cargo solids cargo residues or your additives are harmful to marine environment or not so for that uh, as per ghs your your united nations global harmonized system of classification they have uh, some measures to check the aquatic toxic category that your um, substance or cargo residues or uh, your cleaning agent is uh, has in acute toxicity or chronic toxicity they should not be carcinogenic causing cancer or uh, they are uh, like reproductive toxicity causing uh, reduction of bioaccumulation of your organisms or degrading them reducing oxygen demand and they are harming their organs or not and if they are cons uh, consisting of any materials like polymers rubber plastic or plastic feedstock pellets then these things uh, they are harmful to the environment and then it should be considered as harmful to the environment so practically we have to obtain a certificate msds and declaration from the supplier that these substances are not harmful to the environment because each uh, supplier and each chemical is different and to get the detail and practical information we need to get the declaration from the supplier whether it is classified and sampled and checked as marine harmful substance or not so we can see here that uh, IMO recommends that the supplier should provide a signed and dated statement to the effect that the MSDS stating that the substance is not harmful to the marine environment. And if uh, your incinerator is producing any ash residues, the ash is deemed to be the garbage and its disposal into the sea is not permitted. So that we have to give to reception facilities and note down in the garbage record book now about the animal carcasses we have to we saw that uh, it should be at least 100 nautical miles from land and they should be sp split or uh, they should be treated like that so that they sink immediately and if your ship cannot comply with the requirement because of the passage so it should not sail 100 nautical miles away but it should not it should be at least 12 nautical miles away from the land if the master determines that retaining carcasses will create a health and safety risk on board so we should know what are the harmful effects of uh, this some garbage like especially plastics which are not uh, biodegradable some animals can mistake them for food and aquatic animals get trapped in some plastic ropes or nets and bags and they can kill some bottom growing plants also because of not in contact with the soil or something then food waste is biodegradable but uh, upsets the balance of some food chain and promotes algae and booms so and what are the economic effects that garbage can become attached to ships like your ship's hull and their equipment leading to interruptions in the operations like your eco sounders or logs or something sometimes and beaches with polluted seas can have a negative impact on tourism and ecological impacts then also it is important to know that how much a time other substances take to dissolve or degrade into the sea so tin cans take around 100 years and other substances are less some take six weeks some are in different glass and foam they are take don't degrade cardboard takes four months plastic of uh, rings takes 400 years more 450 years so why do you want to dump the plastics or things into the sea and make them last into 400 years into the sea and pollute the sea then there are some areas apart from the special areas which are very sensitive to garbage and uh, there also we have to avoid throwing the garbage where they are particularly sensitive sea areas or there are some recent areas which are classified sensitive so that is uh, 200 nautical miles of united states ez 
and Irish Sea, Inland Sea of Japan, and Malacca Strait from One Fathom Bank to Horsburgh. These are the particularly sensitive sea areas, and we have to avoid throwing garbage in this also. Now, as we saw regarding the inspection and verification, so Port State Control, they have the authority and the requirement to check the ships that they are complying with the, your garbage management rules. Like practically, mostly we see in USCG, they are US Coast Guard and AMSA, Australian Coast uh, Inspecting Agency, they are very strict. Even if you mix uh, egg or your tea bags, as food waste, then they say that tea bags, uh, the cover they have plastic lining, so it should be put with others or plastic. So they are very strict about that. So we have to be careful with them. It can cause a lot of personal fines. And uh, if the ship is broken or missing or the ship has suffered damage and route, both our team must be informed accordingly. So it's at least it is your duty to inform uh, Port state and port authorities regarding that. Then as we saw, uh, there are many places and many months the ship is at sea or in port also sometimes the garbage discharge facility is not available. So we have some uh, equipments like incinerators or in compactors or comminators like this to reduce the size of garbage, oily rags and all. So they should be maintained properly. So advantages are disposable of garbage. If it is not possible at sea, you can have a reduced reduce storage space and uh, allowing absorption of some type of garbage. So you have to be very careful when you are doing using incineration. Each first thing is it should be approved as per IMO, then cargo residues and packing materials, plastics, PCBs, Garbage containing any trace of heavy metals, refined petroleum products, they are all not allowed in to be burned in uh, incinerator, all NX1, 2, and 3. Only some rags, oily rags, and all are sometimes allowed. Then also there is a requirement for your uh, garbage containers, like we have on your ship 200 liter drums for the station, garbage station, and everywhere in the accommodation. So it should be first, it should be a very tight and closed container, good condition, securely covered, stenciled, and uh, it will be inspected by port authorities. And then all garbage should be segregated and cleaned in the uh, good garbage bags and collected and disposed as per the requirement. Now the garbage record book, it should be retained on board for two years and available for inspection to port uh, officials always. We, and all the receipts should be attached with that. 